Hi everybody, welcome to the Get Cracking podcast again and here is another interesting guest in the studio with me and it is not a businessman and it's not a content maker uh, but it is somebody else. Um, Bogdan, welcome. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me here. Doing very well. Thank very you. Well. Uh, so before we dive in, everybody who comes on the podcast, they are forced to introduce themselves within 60 seconds. 60 seconds. I'm going to time this up. Cool. All right. Please. So Bogdan Lupu, it's, it's a 33 years old young artist that never stopped dreaming and keep pursuing, you know, transmutating thoughts into reality in order to make a decent living <laughs> and uh, how would I say be able to impact the external a little bit 15 seconds left what else I live in Finland I am Romanian Italian born in Romania raised in Italy and now living in Finland for for enough time let's say <laughs> yes thank you thank you for this introduction and through the next 40 50 minutes we'll get to know way more about yourself and about your craft which is art but then for people who don't know what exactly what kind of art you are doing so would you tell us what's your art i am a fine painter i paint on canvas only i've tried to do some sculptures or paint over sculptures but it's not my thing i don't think uh, i mean unless i try a new medium, a new uh, a new version of techniques or try to develop new skills, then I might do it. But at the moment, I'm not that uh, attracted, right? So I'm very concentrated on, uh, on, on canvas, basic classic canvas, mm. linen, cotton, mixed gesso and colors, right? Yeah. So uh, my art, what kind of art I do? It's... It, it is a very, very colorful and, and expressive in a way art. I often uh, treat topics like uh, personal stories and references. Mm -hmm. uh, I often point uh, tributes, small tributes to other artists or uh, people that in a way had, had an impact on us, like humanity, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, kings, artists, actors, uh, people with great value of, of, of humanity, you know? Yeah. So uh, I'm very inspired by uh, classic art and also uh, very inspired by the, by the contemporary uh, mentality, which is very liberal in a way. So it's so interesting that we speak, we speak about art and, and your, your art is like visual, it's on a canvas and yeah. now this is like a podcast and then we're trying to explain it. So I would just, you know, call everybody who, I would I just call everybody who is listening to go to maybe your Instagram is the best place. Instagram and website. Yeah. I have like Instagram is the main platform. What's the Instagram handle? Uh, Lupu, Lupu, Lupu all together. Yeah. Lupu, Lupu, Lupu. Go right now, check it out and, you know, stay with us. So then we will dive in of like how it is, what kind of, what drives you. Uh, but then what I've noticed from your art, it kind of, it reminds me a bit of a uh, street art. Yeah. Is there a coloration with the street art? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's very inspired by street art. Uh, I used to be a street artist when I was younger. Okay. When I moved to Rome in, in early 2000, uh, you know, I moved from Romania, Moldova, mm -hmm. the region of Moldova, countryside. I know it really well. Like, you, you already heard. So my, my mother is from Transnistria. So it is it's basically also Moldova and Ukraine. Yeah, my, my, my area was basically a rural area. Yeah. So trees, nature. Uh, you know, lands, landscape, yeah. very beautiful green area, yeah. except the great post-Soviet blocks yeah. where, I, where I was born. But most of my time was spent into that environment, green environment, love for the nature, animals, mm. grandparents, you know, all this like Balkan style mm -hmm. love. Then I, then I moved to Rome, which was a totally different like twist, you know, uh, old imperialistic massive buildings, yeah. marble, 
statues, art everywhere. So that was very, very shocking for me. I was like, what is this? <laughs> How did they make it? How did they build it? What did they do, what did they do inside? Like, it was very impressive. Yeah. So I, I was like immediately shocked. And, uh, and then when I was a teenager, I tried to kind of mark my reality, you know, through graffitis. But that wasn't very successful. Okay. Since it's very illegal in Rome, although everybody does it. But my father is very strict guy, so yeah. he doesn't <clears throat> he doesn't like uh, vandalism, or he saw it as a vandalism. It was it was actually vandalism because I, I used to have this marker, mm. thick brick, you know, marking a tag on whatever space I had. What was your nickname back then? Corbo. 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 What the scene? Okay. Corbo, and um, I used to have like a little, not clan, we used to be like a group of friends. Yeah. And everybody had their own like uh, nickname tag. These tags, yeah. yeah we had, like, when when I was a kid, it was yeah. the same story. We were just like, you know, being little vandals with their yeah, kind yeah, of tags. Yeah. Whatever you go, you just leave it, you know. <laughs> and then a couple of times it happened that I had yeah. to come back home, uh, you know, with, uh, with the authorities and it wasn't yeah. that cool and pleasant yeah. for my father, so. Of course. So yeah, I had uh, I had my lesson, you know, and then um, then I had a break. I didn't paint or do any any sort of art, like until uh, until I I moved to my own flat here in Helsinki, in Punavuori. It was 2017, way before COVID, and uh, I just moved to this new flat and I wanted to decorate it, made some works, and I had some friends and girls, you know, mm. company over. And they were curious about it. So once a girl offered herself to buy a painting hmm. and I was like, that, that's mine. That's for my own decoration. And she was ready to pay. And she bought this little, little canvas. Yeah. Very colorful. It was like more of a sort of, um, therapy result, right? Painting. Mm -hmm. And she bought it for like eight euros, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then I had to cover up the empty spot. Hmm. And that, I made another one. And a friend of mine who came over, he took some pictures of me and then he, he suggested to, to make an Instagram page. So this is what I did. I put it on Instagram and then I had likes. And this is kind of satisfying, you know, when you, when you do something yeah. and, uh, and people like your, your work, your, not vision. It was just like pure mistake. So you've been kind of recognized already. Like no, on, on no, the first. no, 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 no. It wasn't about recognition. It was. It was anything like that. It was just like, okay, I do something for myself mm -hmm. as a sort of a therapy. And that's the reason actually I started to paint. It was more like, a, I just ended up a relationship. Mm. I was going through like some difficulties, like emotionally, I'd say. Yeah. And, uh, and I was working uh, in a place where I wasn't appreciated. Mm -hmm. And things were mixed up in my mind. So when I moved there, basically I was again like, it was a back backslide from three years before mm -hmm. when I moved to Finland. Mm -hmm. All my all my friends at the time were my ex-girlfriend's friends. So when we broke up, when we split, I had no friends again. So I had to start again from zero. So what I did was just training and being at home in this small, small, very small flat in Pulavori, painting. And yeah, after making five, six paintings, I had friends over, you know, drinking and chilling and having time together. Uh, somebody actually made me notice that it's good what I do. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the definition of a good art. If I don't want to say that my art is good, but I believe it's good. But do you remember this moment? I remember it was when, a, when you recognize I was like, okay, there is like, you know, something is coming out from that. Yeah. I was actually planning to, to open a, um, premiumized factory, like okay. premiumized, like, you know, the cubes, the diamonds, Yeah. but I was going to be comp competition for the people that was my employers. Right. So I was like, okay, it's better not to do that. I had the business plan ready and I was ready to get the, the money, you know, but it didn't happen. I was like, okay, I better do that because I'm going to go against my, my, uh, my employer. Cause they have, they, they still have this, this brand and it's going very well. So, but okay, I'm going to paint. Same period was like winter, 2017. 
yeah winter december november december that dark period so i, I started to paint you know and uh, people came over and uh, this girl bought the painting and i had to recover replace with a new one and that that what that's that what happened like, i kept painting mm -hmm. until i kind of liked what i do i had like over 20 paintings mm -hmm. and then i started to sell like one there one there you know it was pretty nice momentum feeling until uh COVID hit that was a year after already i had like 100 paintings at my little place mm -hmm. And then at some point, somebody uh, suggested me to, to, to drop a show, mm. to make an exhibition. I was like, why not? Called a friend who was a security guy. So we had, we had this like COVID rules. So yeah. We had to respect and be yeah. very diligent. You know? yeah. So I called the guy, count the people, make the, make the invitation for everybody, set up the show, bring the paintings. That was my first show, my, like kind of my first exhibition, like solo show. Yeah which was in uh, Helsinki, Punabori, into a, into a small, like, sausage place. Okay. They used to make sausages, but yeah. they also had a little display for exhibition okay. for, for artists. And, uh, and I brought their paintings, some like 11, 12 paintings, mm -hmm. which were more like a study of, uh, how is it called? Um, I have a lapsus. Uh, Portraits. Mm -hmm. I was doing portraits for for girls. Have they been those are like realistic or more like or very realistic? They were realistic. yeah, very. So it was like a starting moment, you know, yeah. for me. I didn't paint like immediately. I had like different type of faces. Mm. I started with a liquid painting, liquid art. No, actually, it was abstract, then liquid, okay. then faces. Right. Uh, a girl who's an artist as well here in Helsinki. She said like, okay, everybody's able to do this art liquid. It's very cool because you know when you do this art liquid, you can see like how the colors combine and how they they mix up. Right. It's very beautiful. And then when you when you when you spread the colors over the the canvas, mm -hmm. you get something like very mind mind blowing thing. Okay. Like, like you can see the universe. You know, very beautiful type of work. And then this girl said that everybody's able to do that, mm -hmm. which is true. Then I started to sketch again. I made the portrait and then another one and another one. So I had the studies of the mm. faces. Then I incorporated like graffiti style letters, a bit of this, a bit of that. And I, I, I made this exhibition and it was a success. Mm -hmm. It was very, very much appreciated. I saw like three paintings, something like that. And then uh, that summer was the first time we were actually able to work during COVID. Mm -hmm. So all the tips money, all the money exhibition, all the cash I had saved, mm -hmm. I, I just got a new, uh, new studio. And I've been working into that studio for three years and something. How is that? How does that appreciation works for you? So like, you know, how, how do you feel appreciated from what you've done? Well, the, the number one thing is that when, when somebody buys your work, yeah and decides to hang it in his own place. Yeah. That's the number one appreciation. That's the number one like thing I love the most. Like, okay, you want to buy this painting because you think it gives you value. Yeah. So they put it in, your, in their home, in their living so room. So it sounds, it's even bigger than actual price of the painting. It's a value, man. It's yeah. like the value, it's everything. Because in the, in, the, in, the end, in the end of the day, like if you, if you, don't, if you don't have something that gives you value, mm -hmm. then it's useless. So always try to give value to things yeah. or 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 receive it in all the way. I like this glass of water, right? It's very healthy. It's very cool design, you know, the color green, brings to the nature, mm. you know, this type of thing, you know? And then I treat stories. There's always a story. In fact, all the paintings from the beginning until like recent periods, they're all connected like a yeah. visual diary. So the story, story aspect, this is just mind blowing. I, I, I give a bit of a backstory. So like last, last time me and you have seen, we've been in a bar and you've been telling the story behind one of your paintings. And I think me, it was me, you and Rasmus then. Mm -hmm. And then me and Rasmus, we just been sitting with our mouths open and like, because we can, we didn't know it, it that's much of context behind the painting with lots of elements. So for us, we cannot, we don't know what you incorporate. And then once you've told us, we're like, 
aha, like now it makes sense. And actually for me then, this was like the real experience of, you know, maybe getting the value out of your art. So it, it's just the next step. So it's yeah. When you give when you give people uh, hints, the subconscious realizes that that there's something going mm -hmm. on, right? Because I believe that beautiful art, if it's good, yeah. if it's balanced, if the colors is catchy, the story, the elements, and everything attracts you in a second, yeah. in a fraction of a second. That means it's a good art. Yeah. Right. So. I try to focus on that to make it appear as a good art, first of all, and then give it the story behind. So you have the story. There's a storytelling. There's like, a, you know, like a, the rapper talking about mm -hmm. the, the issues in the neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. we have these prostitutions going on, blah, blah, the guy uh, robbing the, the shop, you know, mm -hmm. gangsters and stuff. Same kind of stories. I'm not talking about gangsters and prostitutions here, but it's more like a inner type of uh, fight that every human go through or try to understand why or what mm, or where, mm. you know, it's very deep. It's very deep. In fact, I believe that everybody who's an artist is always there on the front, on the first line of the battle, yeah. let's say battle, in order to understand certain patterns or even the humanity itself, you know, it's very sophisticated and deep, I think. So giving a story to a, to a painting where there's like many elements and contrast and composition and texture. I like to play with texture a lot. So it's a bunch of layers and colors and colors. Yeah. The, the audience, like the guy who's in front of the painting always try to ask himself like, what is going on here? Yeah. Why he put this thing here? Why he put this other element there? Yeah. Why, why look like this type of pale color? Why this other, this part is shining. Yeah. But it's glossy. Are there answers for these questions or yeah. these are like rhetorical questions? They are. Of oh, course, there is answers. But how is that? How is the people who like, you know, they buy the painting, they hang it. Will they know or guess the answers or? Yeah. Somebody actually texted me like a while ago. Oh, I found this element here. Oh, I found this like collage upside down. Okay. Or I found this like squaring in Italian. Yeah. yeah. You know, I like to give like little paints are all like very minuscule yeah. in, in the corner like there and just have like there written maybe some swearing things in Italian or Romanian or yeah. whatever English and uh, and they just know that there's like a bunch of details you know yeah. especially the first paintings I, I've, I've done in the um, once I moved to the secondary studio in Katenoka that was a battlefield like I made I remember I took the place and on the 28th of August and the 10th of September I had the show a solo mm -hmm. show and I didn't have paintings because I was selling out everything during that period like previous period so you have 10 days to actually come I, up yeah with paintings. And, and I made 18 paintings in that day in in that like window frame so like 10 days roughly yeah it was like 12 days 12 days yeah and I made uh, 18 paintings during during that period yeah and I I made the show it was a bar in Calio like a restaurant a big a big space where they organize yeah purposely exhibitions show for artists and uh, I had to be fast, you know, so I didn't have time for detail. I had to be like very, very uh, executive mm. on the idea and everything had to be at the right place with the right contrast color, you know, mm. composition, everything. Mm. I could show you the pictures later. For sure, yes, we will have a look into them. Yeah. It is so interesting for me because like, you know, I, I see the art, like I'm maybe less of an artistic person but I surely appreciate and enjoy kind of looking into something. And uh, it is interesting to kind of catch your thinking behind, like how do you approach the art pieces? How do you come up? So when you had this, when you've been doing this 12 paintings, so from where the inspiration came or like, how did you know that, like what to paint? Mm -hmm. By mistake, you just, paint yeah and then by mistake you take the chance of making a mistake or doing something wrong mm. or maybe even right and then you keep doing it yeah and once you know that okay that's the right moment i have to stop it's balanced expresses a story and uh, it's ready i remember that that exhibition was about uh the title was uh uh Carlo calling mm -hmm. underscore uh wait Reflection of, of reflection of internal and external 
uh, was another element term which I don't remember. Execution of internal and external. It was it was a philosophical thing. So it was about uh, more of a state of uh, emotions mm -hmm. and uh, power, which is your biggest power you have, which is choice mm -hmm. and execution of internal and external perceptions that was the thing right as when you have when you have uh, a thing called perspective you see the thing from your perspective but the perception is like more three-dimensional mm. so you try to observe the, the glass you know from different corners yeah, different yeah. angles different you know give me the twist and try to understand what's going on and the same with the paintings that was like a, a collection of paintings which were made executed very fast mm. i remember i took the place i've I put on the floor some some plastic wrap so I don't mess up the place. I put all the, cam the biggest canvases on a wall and I just started to paint like up and down, up and down. I have the pictures in that, I can mm, show you. Mm. It's amazing because also we speak a lot of business on this podcast and like this approach, for example, it's, it's also really applicable for anyone who wants to do like any other venture. Like, you know, if, if you're limited on time or if you want to do something, you just start doing, you just start expressing, you start trying, like yeah, manifesting. manifesting, like executing your plan or putting the story on a canvas or putting your thought into the business action that might lead to the results. Yeah. So it, it is an interesting color correlation. How do oh, you say this word? <laughs> correlation. Correlation. Yeah. It. Correlation. <laughs> Getting smart in here. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, another thing. So what I've noticed, lots of artists, they don't get recognition. Yeah. Or maybe is it like, because nobody understands their stories or the stories they try to express through their art. What do you think is that? It's not about that. Mostly, uh, uh, it's not about, yeah, it's also about the work itself. Cause in order to, to make good art, mm. the art have to be good, right? Yeah. You just don't do something very liberalistic. I'm a little bit against this liberalistic type of art mm. since it's very like, uh, empty. It doesn't have a emotion. It's like looking at the structure, mm. like a building like an infrastructure nowadays and then taking a step back mm. 200 years 300 years ago and comparing those two two buildings it's totally different mm. thing the first has details has a story has like ornaments all these like beautiful things and yeah. the other one is very cubic minimalistic yeah. simple two three colors sure. that's it so uh in order to make good art you have to in order to, to have recognized art you have to make good art mm. and secondly it's up to the artist itself what I understood on my own experience mm. is that as a self-taught, as a self-taught painter yeah. with barely like youth experience, I made some sketches when I was young and then the graffiti period. Right. And then on the, on my twenties, I made some little experience, experiments at home, uh, regarding this experience. And it's like walking in the forest, you know, you just follow the path or you make mm. your own path. Right. So it's up to you as an artist to to make it happen. You know, it, you have to be very open with the people. You don't have to seem depressed because mm. if you're negative, if you show attitude like bad attitude, then people try to put you aside. Mm. Somebody might use you, as it happened with the artists in the past. Like Jamisha Basquiat, he was a talent, a genius guy, mm. and he wasn't able to to be a in a way a proper a ruler of his own mm. art. So somebody else ruled him, and then. He got depressed and then drugs mm. came in and he died. Same type of thing. So in order to be recognized, I believe, first of all, you have to make good art. Second of all, you have to appear. You have to show up. And third, you have to do very good marketing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because marketing, I mean, you make a nice website and then you make a nice Instagram page. You show up, you show yeah. up constantly, show up, show up, show up, show up. It's like, like these TikTok people or YouTubers, they constantly make stuff. Yeah. Also, it's very annoying to make this type of stuff. I hate it because mm -hmm. I want to. I want to be focused more in the practical thing, which yeah. is making art. But I have to do also the other one. Yeah. Uh, what I've noticed with my work is that uh, here in, the, in Finland, uh, the art here, let's say the classic art, is very boring. It's mm -hmm. very lame. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Very sad work. Very, very. Do you think it's only about Finland or like just globally? Uh, no, no. Nordic countries. Uh, every every place have their own way to represent. Oh yeah. Art, I think more you go in the south, you go to South America. Everybody uses like thousands of colors. 
right? Uh, classic Finnish art is, is a bit sad comparing to the Italian classic art or Renaissance art mm. or what I've studied, you know, because I, I made some little studies by myself. Contemporary art, which is like the recent, the last hundred years, it's more, more liberal, more breaks more the rules in a way, you know, like Picasso did all the time. Yeah. He was very able to do realistic stuff. But you're also bring, breaking rules, right? Everybody have to break rules yeah. in a way. I can also do like very realistic, but it's boring because I'm just copying, yeah. pasting yeah. of uh, a picture or, but since the pictures came out, that was a t t trigger, you know, mm. to change, to give it a, a transmutation from a point to another. Yeah. So um, I, I believe that breaking the rules is necessary for, for, for art, you know, in order to be, to be, you know, kind of successful. I'm not successful, successful artist yet, since I am not academic. Mm. I've, I apply, I've, I've applied three times to this. Um, but let's, let's pause and I actually, I think I, I, I was thinking, or I usually do with the guests, we, we bring a bit of credibility up before we start the conversation, but with you, we kind of skipped and dived into the art topics. Um, so I think on the landscape of the Finnish art, uh, I, you seem to be quite a successful kind of artist. Like, I mean, you have, uh, you already been selling uh, paintings. Uh, this is your kind of full-time... Um, I do hustle all the time, man. Venture. I, I, I work also beside that. I, I try to split my time 50-50 in order to oh, have, yeah. like, painting. But then you did have a period when you've been, like, kind of focused on the art. Yeah, in the last uh, six years, I've been just mm -hmm. painting, yeah. You also, you are quite, I mean, known, so people know a bit of you, at least like, I don't know, maybe it's from my circles. So people actually heard and known you and kind of seen some of your paintings at least. And you have a bit of an Instagram following base. So maybe even if we cannot call you like kind of fully successful, you surely reach certain kind of milestones in your journey. Yeah, def I have definitely done something, of course, yeah. but to, to, to identify myself as a successful artist oh, yeah. is when you actually make a decent living yeah. and you're able to work and you're able to, you know, not have any sort of stress. Yeah. Just like do your work and then you're, you're not stressed. You, mm. you know, you have peace, you have like happiness mm. and you don't have to think about, oh, I'm going to pay this tax because mm. I'm lacking some money and then I have to do some extra work and this and that. That's the moment, that crucial moment of, of an artist, you know, mm. struggling. Um, the, the, how do you call it, like, uh, success. Mm. This local kind of success is more because uh, I also kind of ended up in the epicenter of nightlife in Helsinki, mm. where, where my character, my personality came up, mm. working in that industry, uh, brought me a lot of uh, networks mm -hmm. and they were curious about what I'm doing so right. that was a very good leverage you know to to explore right and give give it a chance for the people to give to you know to perceive a value of my work mm -hmm. so that was a very good momentum where I actually painted a lot and sold a lot but international and national wise I'm not that recognized since I'm not academic mm -hmm. as I was mentioning earlier Mm. Do you think it's academy or a marketing? So they don't know you because maybe you're not good enough, or they don't know you because they never seen you. They have a, they have they have a tool that might catapult you towards something extra. So what do you think is the catapult for you? The catapult is the access of uh, galleries. Oh, oh, okay. So we uh, list it in the gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How we does it call? Is it listed or like... listed or yeah, yeah, listed, okay. yeah. listed is a good word. Yeah, I think it's a good word. Yeah, uh, schools. Once you finish the school, uh, you graduate. You, you take your bachelor's, your master, yeah. blah blah, and uh, and then then the curators of the school uh, they make you do some internship or some like exhibitions abroad okay. or and then you have like. So then they, then you, then your paintings can be in the gallery and then people can come actually see and, you know, enjoy your art. Can you do it like now? Can yeah. you just call them and say, Hey, I've it, done it. I've done it. But yeah. every, every time I, 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 I run a show, oh, yeah. an exhibition, I've done uh, around 30 exhibitions since okay. I started to work, uh, solo shows and also collabs with other artists. And I had to urge myself. I had to work hard, save the money 
you know the tape. But I mean, sorry. So you've done this exhibition. So I wasn't the one that you've you've done just in a. It's, it's just a small space in the in the central Helsinki. Yeah. So you arrange it kind of fully yourself. But what I mean is that if you want to be shown in the gallery. Yeah, gallery. They don't take you unless it's a it's a private gallery. Mm. Private galleries. Uh, they have a waiting list. Mm. Every artist approach them. They're like, oh, I have some paintings, blah blah. I like to I like to show my art here. They have a CV. Okay, this is my work. Mm. Okay, this is the the frame. You have to wait. Mm. You wait three years, and then you really? have, yeah, and then you pay also like a fee. And beside that, you have how to, much is the fee to be? It depends by the gallery. Most of it, uh, most of them ask around a uh, couple thousand, mm -hmm. and then they also take fifty percent commission. 50%. 50, 30, 40, that's, a, that's this a, is like a robbery. It is a robbery, yeah. It is a robbery. That's why it's better to work by by, by yourself. Like yeah. working alone is, is the best thing. Yeah. Yes, you work yourself, your 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 ass off, can we say bad words yeah. here? Yeah, we can. <laughs> you work yourself yeah. off, you know. And then you pay your bills and then once you have rented the place for a month, yeah. you're able to do magic there. So yeah. you call whoever you want. You call. You... But then also you need to you need to invite people in somehow. So then you need to market around your exhibition. But then versus when there's the gal gallery, they just gonna you know get people in. So yeah, yeah. because that's the thing. There's there's a, there's a so-called triangle of art. Mm -hmm. In the triangle of art, you have uh, the artist, then you have the gallery mm -hmm. and the curator. Mm -hmm. The curator job is to connect the uh, artist in the gallery mm. and uh, at the same time he co he connects the audience to people mm. with the gallery mm -hmm. so they through the last element which is money mm. they have the exchange do you have your career curator i i used to have a manager not a curator oh, but yeah, yeah. but uh, the manager was was more like experimental thing mm. and it didn't work so there were no outcome or you just uh, it was it the was design. a complicated situation that he was in a way kind of not forced but uh, he decided to to leave yeah uh maybe the vision i had wasn't matching his vision yeah. in a way so he was also very busy i was the last part of the chain like he was managing other artists not fine artists but mm -hmm. influencers and and singers and that was the first um the first uh, like uh, fine artist, right. and then he realized that uh, being represented by a gallery in Helsinki is very tricky. Mm. Which was a thing that I also understood. But maybe I Even thought without that, him, yeah. yeah. Maybe I thought that with his support and his like, because he was finished, he's finished. Yeah. Uh, with his uh, like talking to the local language, maybe was uh, easier. But in the end, everybody speaks English here, so that mm. that was very easy. So in order to have an exhibition, you just have to pay the rent privately, just find a spot. Right. And then you make some some marketing. Yeah. And you trigger people. It's a, it becomes so like the topic becomes so complicated. It becomes it's business. Like, you know, yeah, it becomes business, exactly. So you start with this, like you think of it, okay, it's an art. So you just think of something, I feel something, I have some stories, I choose the type of art in your context, it's like the painting. And then you put it on a canvas and then, you know, you're a happy artist. But then the reality is it's, this is the beginning. So if you want to do it for yourself and just, you know, enjoy the, the being, yeah. But then if you want to monetize, if you want art to be your profession and then, then it becomes a business, then you need to have a agent or the manager, then you need to have access to these galleries, then you need to do marketing for the events, for yourself, so you need to know people. It's a big hustle. It's a big hustle. This is what I'm actually doing right now. Uh, I've been uh, seven months now without painting since I uh, I, I got rid of the, the big studio I had yeah. in, in Katayanoka. Uh, and in these seven months I've been working nine to five. I was trying to, to understand what's good and what's not good. Mm and uh and uh, one of my collectors actually i approached him just normal talking mm. you know and at some point uh, i mentioned that i've been through some difficulties and then he mm. decided to give me this this space where uh where i'll be able to work for mm. one year mm. and uh the next goal is keep working and trying to maintain an audience and i actually i want to emphasize here so like it is also such a you know human move like what he've done so you know you just been kind of chatting and uh you know you've just been chatting and then 
he just heard your problem so then he just solved it for you because he had an opportunity yeah and then, you know he feels good of of your work and he wants to help you out so that's that's what he, he loves done. my work is a is one of my uh he's the number one collector i have right he, he bought several paintings from me i don't remember the right number i think seven or six and uh he still believes that i'll be somebody here maybe in finland or in the world mm. and uh that's what I'm trying to, look, to work for right now. I don't want to sell like, as I did, you know, you make a product and then you sell it forward. Mm. You just, in a way, try to keep people on the suspense mm. level. Mm. So they, they're constantly, in a way, attracted and, uh, and, and triggered by some next move, what I'm supposed to do. Have there been somebody um, who really influenced your art journey? God. God. Yeah, God man. Okay, tell me God. more. God. I mean, God is the best artist. So how do how do you see it? So how look, how, look, how it is for you? Everything around us is perfect. It's, everything works in an harmony and, and you know, everything okay. it's it's balanced perfectly. Okay. There's good, there's bad, mm. you know, there's black, there's white, mm. there's grey. Mm. There's, there's everything. So I think I think I think God is is the biggest and the greatest creator out there. Mm. I believe that's what I believe. I'm not very religious as a person, but I, I believe in a way we are connected to this outside world, which in the end is not even that much up to us as a singular element because what you can control is only your your thoughts, mm. but but external in a way influences you, right? So, regarding the influence, I believe God is the best creator out yeah. there. I think, I think, and it works. I mean, you just have to have enough envision, envision. Can you say that visions, right? Yeah. And then with the right purpose, you can make it prosper. Right. So it's a triangle that works perfectly. E, 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 as you called, e. Equal, three equal equal like, sides like perfect triangle. It's a know? perfect triangle. I think this is the germ also from geometry, like a perfect triangle. Yeah, like something. It was something. I don't know. I'm not into mathematics, but yeah, yeah. It's amazing that you know. Uh, I feel or like that sense that you are observing a lot. I observe so a lot. You're kind of you. You're looking around. You're capturing the like w what you see, what you feel about the things around you. And then, then it feels the next step after that, that goes through yourself and then you express it further. So yeah. then this is yeah. how the yeah. art come. Yes, yes. Interesting. Um, if, you know, for, if there are some, you know, artist, beginner artists are following us, following our discussion, what would you give them a couple, you know, tips and hints? Work a lot. Work a lot. Work a lot, experiment, yeah. go crazy, grind the painting, smash the painting, burn the painting, restart again, exhibit, shop, shop, that's the main thing. Because there's, there's a bunch of talented people out there that they don't, uh, they don't, wanna, they don't want to uh, show their work. And that's sad. That's very sad because there might be something in, into their reaction mm. that might trigger them to do bigger things eventually in the future. So artists that don't do exhibitions or that don't, don't sell their work, it's not about money. Mm. It's more about like evolution, you know, because mm. if you're steady, if you have a steady relation, relationship with yourself, then you're not evolving. Then you're like, you're just steady. You're like a stone in the river, you mm. don't move anywhere. So in order to, to make something good, something, you know, that prospers, you have to work a lot, make mistakes, work a lot, steal from others, mm -hmm. better people than you, mm -hmm. always can give you better solutions. It's interesting, so you're not only, you don't only steal, you can uh, adopt. Adopt, yeah. yeah. Adaptation yeah. is my sk number one skill. I think I adapt very easily to every circumstance. Hundred percent. And I also I tell this to everybody. Just you know, you can adopt because if it's if it's recreated by you, 
it's you're not stealing you're kind of adopting or like recreating yeah, yeah yeah and also world is so we we live so much time already the humanity so many things been kind of created and we are creating new of course but then also we are adopting the old and kind of recycle recreate and everything yeah, yeah. Back. understanding understanding is the, is the key element here that that makes you in a position to evolve yeah if you understand certain points yeah analyze you put them together one plus one is always two mm. okay so before we wrap up uh maybe two rapid fire questions what's next for you well i just gonna place a week ago yeah tomorrow i'm gonna get uh two tables what i'll work with and then i'm gonna be ready to experiment new to new journey i don't i don't know what will be about mm. i have a i have an idea but this idea I can change. Mm. I'm not sure about it. What I know is that I have to work for a year until I have like uh, enough, you know, how, how do you call it? Spirit. Because mm. I'm on the right mood right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I want to create. I'm exploding in seven months without any... any. You might be craving so, to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did some sketches, but this is too claustrophobic. It's very small. It's very... It doesn't. It doesn't work. Yeah. So uh, I will definitely do some, some, some big, some big chain of stories. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we are craving and waiting for the next exhibition for some new art yeah. pieces. And yeah. Some old art pieces. So I, I think everybody is waiting for that. Uh, and then you know. Where do people find more about you? Or if you need any help with anything, you can also mention now. So maybe somebody can help more. Like if you well, listen to that. The number one, the number one like source of help is uh, buying the supporting the living artists. That's mm. the main thing. Bunch of people, bunch of, bunch of rich people buy from dead artists, mm. and they don't need the money because they're yeah. they're gone yeah. already. So these institutions and 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 foundations get all the money, which is kind of sad. But it's okay. I mean, this is life. Mm. You don't have much control on it. So, mm. what I would say to a collector or or somebody who's interested in art, support always living artists. Mm. That's the main thing. You yeah. never know what's gonna happen next. There's so many artists out there that they are making very good uh, living, selling a piece, and then mm. they're able to make another ten paintings with the with the with the with the income money. So yeah, that's kind of all. Let's see what's gonna happen. You never know. The future is uncertain. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then the final. So, if people would like to connect with you, where do they find you? Social media. Well, social media. Just Google Bogdan Lupu artist, Bogdan. or yeah. or maybe Instagram Lupu Lupu Lupu. I'm not that much on TikTok or YouTube or maybe X. not yet. YouTube. I don't know. I I have YouTube. It takes a lot of time yeah. for me to to edit and all do all this like. Uh, uh how do you call it media work social media social like, media work yeah. yeah i find it very boring like not boring but it's very difficult for me to be focusing on to, into that yeah like because you have to know certain patterns how to do how to do you know the algorithm and everything um it is a bit tricky but you know with the right time and the right or willing to do it it's may, may become possible Absolutely. Uh, Bogdan, thank you so much for, Thanks for having me here. being here. Uh, I am completely sure you'll get where you want to get. I see a lot of kind of, you know, bright thoughts that are like, you know, forward looking and then That's you're crazy. ready to work and you have this kind of know-how and I see the energy flows like through you. And I think this is, this is amazing. And I've learned a few things uh now through our conversation whole so i super hope that listeners did as well um please go and follow bogdan lupo 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 check out your coming check out his coming exhibitions and last but not least subscribe to this podcast and then there is more artists coming here in the future and give it a like give it a review and you know where to find us thank you everybody bye Boots and a dang bow, gotta stay flow. I might pull up in a stagecoach playing Beethoven. Whoa.